So whenever you pass a class as a function parameter, what happens is it passes as a reference type. So you really do, uh, so that you don't confuse with the value type or reference type. That's why I explained it. So finally, this is the class pattern that you have seen so far. Uh, the third bracket means optional, that you can write it or don't write it. It's really up to you. And uh, you haven't seen generics yet, but you'll see it very quick. And the format is you first slide write the uh, access modifier which is defined here you can have only public or internal for the class or nothing at all uh, if you don't have anything it means internal internal class so access modifier then modifier the modifier can be picked from this list i don't know if there is any kind more but uh, you could experiment it but so far what i have seen is these four types you can get in C sharp so if you have another type uh, let me know but it's not really important because all of those are not really uh, helpful all the time few of those you're going to use all the time and uh, identifier is the name that you're going to put for your class and you really can't have any combination from this list and Static we have talked very detail about it. You cannot create it as well as inherited the class and sealed means that you cannot just inherit it That's it and partial. It's my favorite. It's really after uh, .NET 4.0 maybe or 2.5. I, I really don't remember but uh, I really asked this question in interview uh, so if you are interviewed by me be prepared for this so uh, what partial does is if you have the uh, classes in same namespace at the compile time they're just merged if you really go to MSDN you'll see some uh, excellent example I, I have some in my demo projects let's see some examples so we are in Visual Studio uh, let's really switch over to this project it's really an empty project so I have few classes in there this is the A class which really have some uh, properties fields with some access modifiers and this project is for checking access modifiers when we we'll get to it we'll talk more detail about it so we have a same class name as class A in a different directory uh, class A but I really put the namespaces same as you can see that the namespace is same as this and if you see the slides it says that partial classes only combine or merge if they're in the same namespace so if I really include these files in my project let's include the class C as well so what should happen is in the compile time they should be in the same class so in class a in this different folder I really have only one field what says that public int it's a public so it could be accessed from anywhere so uh, partial public field that's it so that you understand that uh, the partial classes are merged and I just put the partial keyword before the class and here you uh, don't see that there is a partial but you still can put a partial it doesn't matter but um, there should be one class which shouldn't have partial but I really don't think that compiler will mind if I really put this yeah compiler doesn't mind but the convention or the best thing to do is put your one class that doesn't have the partial in it so uh, Partial means there is uh, some other class which is same name as this That's it. So In the compile time those both classes should be merged and Visual Studio is very smart We don't have to compile even though we compile but if, if you just put the dot You'll see that the partial public field is there 
So if I modify the namespace, let's say I make it to change something like this. So if I just change the namespace and if I came to A and if I really try to access the partial public fill, I can. So let me go over to our slides after excluding those. So you can also have sealed partial. Sealed partial is you cannot inherit it and it will be merged at compile time if the namespaces are same. So we are very close to ending the class session. It's the conclusion. And whenever you create a class, you create a new type of data. So when you create a string, it's really a string class object. And when you create a list, it's a list type of object, something like that. So another thing about the class, uh, some people I have seen over the years that got afraid that when you see a data structure class or something heard about this is about data structure data structure is just a decent name for class don't freak out it's a simple thing in data structure we really talk depth about many various kinds of data types like the list or link list something like that but don't be freaked out it's just the class which represents a different format that's it so now we are at the inheritance topic, our uh, third most important topic in object-oriented programming. So there are many definitions about inheritance and I really simplified in into one sentence and very short that inheritance is something like getting something from previous generation. That's it. Getting something from previous generation. So let's see a scenario where inheritance is not there. So let's see when we really need the inheritance first. So we have these properties of a person and a person could walk, talk and eat. And let's say student, student also have same type of properties. First name, last name, date of birth, address, gender, something like that. But extra field, CGPA, completed course and so on and he also have behavior like display something like that and a teacher also have first name last name date of birth something like that and a method or behavior display so how we can implement it we just write the code so let's see some code we are in visual studio so let's switch over to our uh, previous project and here you can see that we really don't have any code we just cleaned it up and uh, there is a uh, in there is two classes student and uh, teacher that I have written earlier so the data fields that I have copied from the person class because these are really same uh, and I put it in data uh, region and the extended properties like uh, subject proficiency, su office hours, department, etc. I put in the extended region so so that I could really uh, differentiate those and really see that which are really extra. And display in the display method, I'm just saying that uh, uh, his first name, last name, proficiency, and so on, uh, displaying all the fields. That's it. But I'm really copying these fields and. In the students, I'm also doing the same thing. I'm copying these all fields from the person class, so so that I really don't have to type it. And the extended fields are written here, and in the display property, it's very simple and straightforward. I'm just printing the student details about the class. But we really don't need uh, eat uh, or walking, etc., in our uh, student class because we really well, don't want it. To be more complicated so that's it so let's go to our program and let's really write some code and let's say I want to make the student class so student that's it so 
I really say the first name. First name, or say, let's say, uh, lies. Last name, Roman, son. And let's really display our student. And we really didn't initialize the completed course, let's say, fine. Fine, okay. So, let's just print it. So you'll see that we have a default date of birth and others are written here. So, um, completed course and so, so on. So, as you can see that uh, it's very simple display class but what you are seeing that I have copied many properties in both of those student and teacher uh, classes which is really uh, not good practice so let me switch over to our slides the thing that I'm doing copying and pasting is really not a good practice so we've seen the code so the same things should not be repeated that's a, a design principle so the principle is principle says that do not repeat yourself try and Ruby is really the first programming language that really emphasizes more on this topic principle was there but Ruby really influences or emphasizes it more and after Ruby, many programming languages really influ uh, influenced by it. Uh, if you really see that what we can do since we have same properties from person to student, we could make a relationship from the person to a student and this relationship is said to be an easier relationship. So a student is a person, teacher is a person. It seems logical and let's see that how we are going to do it. So we are grayed out this portion because we have this portion in the person. So what we are going to do is we are going to inherit it from the person so that we really don't have to write the same properties again and again. For teacher, we are inheriting the person. So since we are getting the properties from the person, so the person is said to be the super class or parent class or base class since the student and teacher are derived from person class it is known as child class or derived class or subclass so inheritance let's say you have a person class dot 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 I'm not uh, putting the all codes here so let's say you have the student class so what you want to do is inherit from person so teacher you want to do the same so that when you initialize the a student you could set the first name equals allies there should not be any problem so in C sharp what we do is put the colon in front that means we are inheriting from the person that's it and C sharp and Java and some other language like PHP only supports inheritance from one class at a time so you cannot inherit from multiple class at a time but C++ program language like that uh, supports multiple class, class inheritance at the same time so that's really an important point so if you really say that student is a type of person and is a type of let's say X and Y then it will not compile it will give you a compilation error so after that you just sign the values let's see some of the coding in Visual Studio 